Hi, I'm Teresa from Parenting for Social Change, and I want to thank you for joining me in this video today. What I wanted to talk a little bit about was some of my own journey as a parent in moving away from the need to control the children who share my life and how difficult in so many ways letting go of control was and still is a process for me. And when I began as a parent, uh, I was in my mid-30s, and my mother had just died of cancer. And I had a lot of fear around death and dying. Um, actually, both my parents had just died uh, within a year of each other. And from that fear came this belief that uh, once I had a child, that I would be able to control things, to ensure that the child who came into my life would be healthy, would eat healthy things, that I would be able to avoid for them all of these negative things that I had seen my mother go through, and if I could just set him on the right path, that everything would be great. And so from this fear of having a child who was not healthy, um, even my own health, because of watching my parents die, I really struggled with trying to control his entire environment. But this was not a new need to control. I actually had been trying to, I think, my whole life regain the control I had lost as a child over my own decisions, over my life, over doing those things that were important to me that adults around me had decided was not important or I shouldn't be doing. And I was very much an A-type personality, very driven and very committed to achieving success. Um, and that success, though I took some alternative routes, was still based on what our culture defines as success, whether it was career achievement and advancement, um, you know, coupled with, of course, my own desire to live by my values and doing work that I was passionate about. So Martel, the first child in my life, came along, and I spent the first five years pretty much controlling him. And it came out of the best intentions, the intention of believing that I could create a healthy and wholesome environment, that I could avoid for him um, getting diseases or that he would eat healthy his whole life and that somehow I could avoid those things that I saw happen to the people around me in my own life and in my own desire to have some control. And what I experienced as a parent was the more that I controlled him, the more that he pushed back against that control and the more that he rebelled against my control. And at first, I didn't see that control and rebellion dynamic um, initially. At first, I thought I was trying to be preemptive. I would, for example, I believed he was like me when we were dealing with issues of food, and I thought he needed to eat in particular intervals. I believed he shouldn't have any sugar, he shouldn't have any processed foods. I worked really hard to make organic foods and buy organic foods. And so what I discovered was as he got older and his desire and need to have some control over his life, which really began when he was about 18 months or two years old. I had trusted him for a long time as an attachment parent um, to feed him on cue, to nurse him on cue, to respond to his needs and desires um, as a baby. But as he got older, we were in conflict. And so my control, my need to control, just came down harder and harder on him. And he became angry. And he became angrier. And so I created this cycle of control. When I started doing research for my book, what I discovered was that this was not a unique cycle. And when I began to take a more objective view of my parenting and what I was doing and what I was creating in that relationship, I found that the commonalities were there in terms of control. That when, as human beings, we feel like others are trying to control what we do, control our behavior and our actions, Essentially, we begin to feel dehumanized and we push back, we rebel against that control. If you think about that in your own life, I can think about many instances in my own life where I rebelled against the control of the adults around me, even my partner when I thought he was controlling me. And so it's a common thing and yet we don't look at how that really operates because we believe the messages that we hear from our broader culture and society about the need to control children in order to ensure their outcomes. And then our fears feed into that need to control because we believe somehow we can control the outcomes for them. We can control that they'll be healthy. We can control that they'll be productive. So what I had created was this cycle. 
And that cycle was confirmed in the research uh, that I saw uh, and read when I was uh, writing my book, Parenting for Social Change. So what happens is we as parents, we, gonna, we are going to see some negative behavior. And this also could be we believe there's going to be some negative outcome from some behavior. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it as that. And then what we do as parents is we impose some kind of control over the child. What the child then does is the child rebels. There's rebellion. So what does this rebellion do for us? It confirms our belief that control is absolutely necessary. We don't see the rebellion as the result of the control we believe the rebellion is a sign that there needs to be more control. So what do we do? We impose more control over the child, and that creates this cycle of control. So all we do is there's a behavior that we don't like. We think it's going to result in some negative outcome. We impose control. There is rebellion and more quote-unquote negative behavior. We impose, we impose more control, and that cycle just continues. And I think part of our challenge is, as parents in this culture and in our society is to challenge the belief that control is necessary to parenting. And in my book, you know, the first half of the book is really spent talking about the harm of control on children as seen in the social science research and in the research literature that's out there. That the results of control really are always this. Children don't feel free. They make choices that are in opposition to what we want from them, which results in more negative behavior. We impose more control. It goes around and around. So what I want to challenge you to think about is to step away from this paradigm. Step away from this belief that control is necessary. What happened for me was at about age five, when I started letting go of control, Martel's anger began to dissipate. He became not, uh, you know, much more human. I treated him as much more human, and so he responded to that. He responded to the ways in which I was attempting to treat him with respect as a human being. He responded to the ways in which I tried to create space for him to make his own decisions in his life. He responded to the ways in which I began to trust him and his ability to make those decisions, and to trust that if he made mistakes, that that was just part of the process. Just as we're able to accept in learning, hopefully, that mistakes are part of the process, and sometimes we don't accept that, it's the same thing in making decisions and having control over their lives. So Martel became a different person. When I let go of this cycle of control, when I broke the cycle of control, he really did become a different person because I created that space for him to stop responding to me in this cycle, to stop reacting to me in the cycle. And that really was a critical beginning of transforming our relationship. And if we tie that back to the entire theme of the work that I do around transforming childhood, transforming our, our relationships with children, when we let go of that control, we also teach children, we model for them through our own relationships, that we don't have to have power and control over others in order to be able to have mutual and joyful relationships, to get what we need. We don't have to control but we believe out of fear that we have to control. Our society buys into that. They prey on our fear. Our broader social institutions prey on that fear and use that fear to convince us that control is the way that we need to parent. So I'm going to create some more videos. You'll have a chance to see those on my YouTube channel that talk more about the harm of control because I think that's another critical piece. Not only do we have to interrupt the cycle of control, but until we really begin to understand the impact of control on children, we may be challenged to let go of it. And even if we do understand and agree with that, there may be other blocks for us in letting go of control. 
So I want to thank you for joining me in looking at the cycle of control and looking at how control operates to dehumanize and to create rebellion in children. And that if we're to break the cycle of control, we really have to challenge ourselves as human beings to look at what the true impact is of that control, not what we believe and what we've been socialized to believe is the outcome of that control. So thanks, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in my next video.